Joel Snapchat, one of my favorite futurists, Peter Diamandis, just put out this awesome blog post called The Demonetized Cost of Living, where he's arguing that all of the basic human needs are basically moving towards zero cost, which changes the future. So he argues that all technologies go through these six phases, uh, digitization, uh, deception, disruption, demonetization, dematerialization, and democratization. Say that 10 times fast. Basically what this means is when a technology becomes digitized, it becomes its exponential pace because it builds on itself and uses the tools available to build on itself. So it doubles on this every year, meaning uh, it drops everything to zero cost. The simplest analogy is like photography in the early days. It was really uh, expensive to buy cameras, expensive to buy film, expensive to develop it, and it was scarce. You only had a certain number of shots. Whereas today, you can take as many photos as you want for near zero cost. The cool thing is that our technology and our processing power is basically embedded itself into everything in society. So even food is now an information-based process, and so all of our basic needs are following that exponential pace. So governments around the world are freaking out because they predict that within about 20, 10 to 20 years, 50% of the world's jobs will disappear due to technological automation. So they're looking at things like universal basic income and reducing the work week. But the other factor to take into consideration is that our cost of living is actually dropping exponentially. So if you look at the, say, let's just look at like seven categories of basic human needs. Things like transport, healthcare, food, energy. One, okay, transport. So within about two, three years, Uber's gonna start rolling out autonomous cars. Now, autonomous cars will allow you to drop the price of current uh, transport costs by five to 10 times. The moment those autonomous cars will start rolling off manufacturing lines, Uber will try and uh, buy everyone they possibly can and deploy them immediately. Meaning your cost for an Uber will be well under $5, one under $3 and go towards zero. Overnight, it'll literally be cheaper and more rational for you to leave your car in the driveway and never touch it again, because it would be silly to own a car. Actually, it would be silly to own anything. You'll access everything, but own nothing. Food. Okay, food has been dropping rapidly over the last couple of decades, and it's going to continue to do so. Uh, I think I've read in that thing that 70% of the cost of food is attributed to handling and storage and transportation. Vertical farms can grow food far more efficiently and at the source, like right within the cities in skyscrapers, and it can grow up more efficiently using 95% less water and control the exact growth of those plants. And the pace of biotechnology is astonishing. So I watched this two hour indie bio talk of all the pictures of all the latest uh, batch going through indie bio. Go look it up, I'll link it in the comments on Facebook. It's amazing what's happening. So in this latest batch of, at indie bio, there's actually companies working on leather that is made from mushrooms. So it has more tensile strength and more qualities and abilities. Uh, people working on synthetic breast milk and synthetic dairy. And if you combine that with efforts in, with uh, in vitro meat, basically like synthetic cultured meat, I think within about five years, we will no longer be killing animals for meat or dairy. It'll all be in synthetic. It'll be cheaper, more ethical and better. All these things together mean that food is an information process, so it's an exponential pace, which exponential price drop, meaning it'll be near zero cost within about five years, maybe 10 years. <laughs> Healthcare, you've got AI diagnostics, which are better at diagnosing uh, cancers and different uh, diseases and things within MRI scans, within uh, brain scans, far better than any doctor can. You've got preventative healthcare with like 24 seven biometric monitoring, passive monitoring, and kind of like yeah, notifying your doctors whenever, whenever there's an issue. Robotic surgeons will inevitably be better than any human doctor because human doctors, you know, even the best surgeons in the world have a cap, whereas AI robotics can always improve themselves. And the human genome is already under $1,000. It used to cost a billion dollars, like billions of billions when it first started. It'll cost cents within the next five, 10 years. Four, housing. Okay, housing only costs a shitload at the moment because of location, because everyone wants to live in the cities where all the jobs are, and because of stupid government intervention rules like negative gearing. You've got companies starting to 3D print entire buildings. Actually, in China, they've been doing test skyscrapers. So imagine just printing out entire uh, communities in the space of a week, entire houses in the space of a day. Once virtual reality and augmented reality mature, um, and they're on next different pace, so that'll happen very rapidly, um, you'll be able to live wherever you want, but work in still in an intimate way, because you'll still be able to have face-to-face -face communication with everyone. And with autonomous cars, like the commute time doesn't really matter anymore, because rather than wasting that two hours in the car or an hour in the car, you can actually, that's leisure time, that's, that's work time, that's do whatever you want time. I mean, you can live wherever you want and not, not have it be an issue at all. Like, I live an hour and a half out of Sydney, out of the major city, and yet I can have this awesome lifestyle where it takes me five minutes to walk to the beach and get a coffee every morning. Five, energy. Look at this glowing thing. How pretty. This thing, apparently, provides, every hour, it provides the Earth with 5,000 times more energy than we consume in an entire year as a species. Energy at the moment is expensive, and it's uh, dirty, like it's polluting the environment and causing all these issues with climate change and global warming, and countries invade each other to control the oil resources. It's messed up. But solar is an exponential technology. Um, it's dropping every, I think, 18 months uh, in, in cost, and it's like doubling in performance. So in about 13 years, 100% solar. Double. Six, education. So education is already free in many parts of the world. There's so many resources online through YouTube, but you've also got uh, big prestigious universities offering free courses. That's only gonna continue. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that we pay so much for university degrees now. They should be free. I think the only reason why they're still continuing is because of uh, cultural and parental indoctrination. They can't even keep up with the skills the employers need. And why would you pay tens of thousands of dollars to be taught by a professor who just happens to live in that area um, nearby that university when you can get taught for free by the literally the best in the world at that particular topic? Seven, entertainment. Well, entertainment for most of my life has been free because I've been pirating and burning and torrenting all software, movie, downloads, TV, books, everything, my entire life. 
they got services like Spotify and Netflix and uh, Amazon and YouTube and all these things where they either offer com uh, content for free or you pay a small monthly fee to access all universal content. Okay, I want to add two more to Peter's list. The first one is communication and the second one is decentralization. So the UN has already declared internet access a universal human right. Um, and now you've got all these satellite companies coming on board that are starting to offer free satellite-based worldwide internet. Good old Elon Musk and SpaceX plans to launch the satellite constellation very soon, which will offer free worldwide broadband to everyone on the planet. Then you've got Google doing Project Loon, then you've got Facebook doing their drone ships. Then you've got the $5 smartphone, I think that's in India if you go look it up. Um, so you can kind of see the, the cost of all these things is dropping dramatically. So within like 10 years, 7 billion people will be connected having broadband internet. And finally, one of my favorite ones, decentralization. Blockchains and DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations. And the reason I love this is because they remove the profit incentive from corporations. In an ideal world, a company makes profits and they use those profits to reinvest in, into R&D to create more value and more goods for humanity. But typically, the profit just goes to the hands of the few, and that's why you have wealth inequality. With DAOs, they provide goods and services to all of humanity, to the entire social common good, um, at zero profit, because it only needs to generate enough revenue to pay for its own services and products. And on a technical level, the way this works is that, say you want to replace Uber Inc. What you do is you create an Uber DAO, which is this autonomous thing that's not run by anyone, it's just code, and it helps connect the driver to the passenger. At the moment, Uber charges a fee for every, every uh, transaction, and that fee obviously has a profit in it. So that profit becomes an unnecessary margin on the cost to the end consumer, yeah? Let's just say for argument that Uber charges 20% fee. Now, if you create a DAO, an Uber DAO on the blockchain, uh, you can charge, say, a 10% fee, like half, because now you don't need employees, you don't need service, you don't need all these overhead costs. But the reason why the blockchain is so awesome is because in public blockchains, what you can actually do is see the entire code. So I could copy paste that DAO, lower the fee, and then just deploy it. Now there's a cheaper DAO. And obviously this process continues and continues until it hits like the equilibrium where it generates enough revenue to continue itself, to maintain itself, to have some value, but zero profit. Now apply this to every single company on the planet, every single business on the planet. Suddenly profit isn't a thing anymore. You don't make profits. If you do make profits, it's to give back to humanity. The less profits the DAO makes, the cheaper it can actually provide goods and services to the end consumer. And what this means is that they can rapidly outcompete and outpace the traditional capitalist model. A model that we all live in, that where these companies have a fiduciary requirement to generate as much profits for their stakeholders. If they don't, bad news. And so this is awesome. This is how you hack the system. And so hopefully people will choose companies that make zero profit, or the profit they do make, they feed back into a basic income system to provide basic goods and needs, a basic income to everyone on the planet, uh, or provide some social good to everyone. So I think as a species, we're truly at the precipice of amazing exponential change. Within the next five to ten years, within that little time gap, we're going to see more change, I think, than we've seen in the past hundred years. It's going to be fucking awesome.